Welcome to InfoGamer, my name's Mark, and today I want to show you how to do the camera follow for the maze game. So, let's get started. Okay, right now we have our main camera and player, and we've dragged those up to the top of our hierarchy so we can find them faster. Um, let's move our camera right above our player, so we can easily do that by copying the X position of the player and pasting it in the X position of the camera grabbing the Z position of the player and pasting it in the Z position of the camera. So now it's directly above the marble. And uh, then we can grab the camera in the hierarchy view and drag it onto our player. This will make it a child of the player and we can hit play and test our camera follow. As you can see, it gives a really cool effect but it's not the effect that we want. It follows the rotation of our player and that would be impossible maze to, <laughs> to go through to play with that um, type of effect. So I just wanted to show you that because that would be the camera setup that you would want for like uh, if you were driving a car and you were inside the car. The camera would stay the same when you're turning the car, you turn it left and the camera would stay exactly in the same position and turn left with your car. Or in a spaceship simulator, you'd have the camera exactly in the position that you want it to be, and then it would rotate with your spaceship. If you are doing a spiral, the camera would rotate in a spiral. So that would be quite effective for that type of game, but we're not doing that type of game, we're doing a maze. So let's get started with a script. Um, yeah, let's right click in the project window and create a C-sharp script and we can name this camera follow or camera controller, whichever one you want to name, whatever name you want it to be. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. Now we want to declare two variables and those are gonna be public game object so space game object and if you spell public right a game object will pull up really easily when you start typing it and you can hit tab and let's hit player semicolon and essentially this is going to be a box in the inspector that we can drag the player into and store it in our game object variable the next line of code is we're going to want it to be private and it's going to be a vector 3 because we want to store the difference between our position, our player position, and our camera position. So we can um, name this uh, offset. Okay, we want to set our offset variable, our vector3 variable, right at the very beginning of the game. And so that would be in the start function. So let's start our next line with offset equals okay let's see if you can guess this next line of code we want to grab the camera position which this script is going to be attached to the game the camera game object and then we want to subtract it from our player position so what type of code do you think we are going to need for that all right i'll tell you right now it's um, transform dot position minus okay so this before we type in the rest of the code let's see if you can guess the second part of the line transform dot position is going to be our camera position because this script is attached to the camera we don't have to put camera dot transform dot position but that is only half of this equation we need to grab the other player position. So what would you type in right now? I'm going to give you a couple seconds to think think that through. We're going to type player dot transform dot position. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you because the player game object we are going to drag into this variable that's called player so we can call it right here by the same player and then we're grabbing the transform of that game object 
and then the position of that game object. And that's how you do it with a period. So to show you the position that we're actually grabbing, we go to player, here's the transform, then period, and we're grabbing the position. If we wanted to grab the rotation or scale, we would type in rotation or scale instead of position. But we are doing the position in this script. Okay, the next line of code is not going to be typed in void update because we actually want everything to be calculated first before our next line of code is run. So we're going to type in late update. And it, we're going to delete this uh, little hint for update because it throws a little, oh, are you sure you want a late update? The note looks like you're wanting an update instead. But anyways, OK, back on track. So late update will run after everything else. So the player will have moved that frame, and then late update will run and move the camera to the player position. And that's why we want late update. How would we go about setting the camera position equal to the player position plus the offset? I bet you guys know how to do that. But if you don't, here we go. Type transform.position. Make sure you spell it all right. Equals player dot transform dot position plus the offset. Semicolon. Did any of you guys get that line of code correct before I told you? I gave you some hints, but were you able to actually write the line after I gave you the hints? Let me know in the comments if you were able to get that line by yourself. If you aren't, it's okay. Just keep following along and eventually the code will make more and more sense and you'll be able to you'll be able to understand what I'm telling you and you'll be able to write the code after that. Okay, so this is actually all the code we need. And uh, so remember late update runs after everything else is run in that frame. So the player will move and then late update will run and then we'll take the position of the camera and set it equal to the player, the player's new position, which is player.transform.position, and then we're going to add the offset. And I set it equal to on accident. <laughs> we want to add the offset. Let's save it and go over to Unity. Okay, we have the camera selected, and uh, whoop, let's select the camera in the hierarchy and then grab the C-sharp script and just drag it over there and it will connect to the camera. And then we have this player position. This is from typing in the public game object player. It's looking for our game object. So what game object do we want to drag in there? You would be correct if you were dragging in the player game object. Okay, now the player game object is stored into our script. So whatever position the player is going to be in on our game, it's going to change that in our script, and then it's going to change our camera position. So let's hit play and see if it works. Sweet, our camera is moving with our marble. You can probably barely see it. Let's unplay, let's unplay the game and then drag our camera closer. And that's probably a bit close. We can uh, also make our marbles or our player size to uh, 2 and then bring it up to 1 instead of 0.5 um, because it will have a, radi or a radius of 1. Okay, now our player position is a little bit bigger and we can drag. Whoop, I'm, <laughs> I'm dragging the, the marble up. I gotta reselect the camera, drag it up a little bit higher after unplaying it. Okay, let's hit play again. Okay, now our marble is moving through our maze and it just got stuck in between. So we can easily fix that by just doing 1.5, 1 1.5, and 1.5. So it should still fit in between our walls. All right, sweet. The camera is now following our marble. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, we are ready. There are so many things I want to show you that you can uh, change up with your maze. Uh, we can create some blender blocks that we can bring into Unity to make our maze a bit different. We can uh, make like little towers or ramps to make our maze a little more 3D and not have it be one level plane. But I will show you all that in an upcoming video. I also want to show you guys how to create a start screen and a finish screen for this maze so when the player gets to the end it actually registers that they won or they can go back to the menu and select a new level so let's all show you that in a new video thanks so much for watching please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't thanks guys you're the best and i'll talk to you later